Her name is Amy, already 12 years old. I've always been shy, especially around women, to the point where I find myself at a loss for words. Therefore, I had given up on the idea of romance since high school, convinced that I was not cut out for it. I was even sure I'd spend my life alone. However, my hardworking yet reticent self was approached by my boss with a matchmaking proposal. The woman in question was over a decade younger than me. A young lady like her wouldn't be satisfied with someone like me. But the thing is, when we thought about the type of man she was looking for, you were the only one who fit the bill. What were her criteria? Someone serious and quiet. Someone who isn't greedy and desires a peaceful life. You can't find young guys who fit this description. Is she seriously okay with me? Actually, when she saw your photo, she took a liking to you. Really? Would you consider meeting her? That's how I met my wife Eliza. Eliza was charming with radiant skin and beautiful long hair. Since we were both introverts and not very talkative, our first matchmaking meeting didn't go very well, with my boss and Eliza's mother almost giving up on us. However, we both had the ability to share silent emotions, appreciating the beauty of our surroundings without words. Noticing her eyes sparkle at the same view, and sharing a smile when our eyes met. It was enough to understand each other. I had never met someone with whom I could share such moments. We slowly nurtured love between us, and got married two years later. Our daughter Amy was born when I was 35, and Eliza was 22. Unlike us, Amy loved to run around, full of energy. When she was five, I often saw Eliza trying to catch her in our backyard, always ending up falling behind. You're really not athletic, as expected. I've always been clumsy. Always I was absent from school sports days as well as PE. It seemed Eliza was always physically weak as a child. Instead, she had other talents. For one, she was an incredible artist. They even deserved to exhibit such as her oil paintings. Recently, someone who liked her painting at an exhibition bought it for a considerable amount. Maybe one day you'll become a famous artist, and I won't have to work anymore. No kidding. You know, artworks only become valuable after the artist's death. Even Monet was criticized in his time, now look how revered he is. Oh, really? Then, who bought your painting? A hospital director in New York wanted it for his hospital. Says it'll soothe the patients. That makes sense. Your paintings have a calming effect, like a gentle meadow. Thank you. Glad to hear. We might not have a dramatic story, but I believe we've built a peaceful home together. Therefore, the events of that day are still vividly etched in my memory, and I couldn't forget them. On my way home from work, I thought I'd pick up some cake for Eliza and Amy. Lately, I felt like Eliza had been a bit down. I'd been busy with work and hadn't spent much time with her, so it was just a feeling, but it seemed like she was lost in thought, maybe troubled by something. Amy likes apple pie, Eliza prefers cheesecake, and I'll go for the classic chocolate cake. It was when I carefully left the store, making sure not to shake the box. A black limousine pulled up in front of the luxury hotel across the street. Out of curiosity for a vehicle I'd never associate with my life, I watched to see who would come out. Sure enough, a man in a suit that looked tailor-made for his wealthy physique emerged. What surprised me was the woman who got out from the door he opened for her. It was Eliza. She was made up more beautifully than I'd ever seen, dressed in a lovely suit, and with a shy smile, she took the man's arm and stood up. Then, they entered the hotel together, as if close. Eliza? It might have been someone who just looked like Eliza. I frantically pulled out my cell and called her. After a few rings, the woman who was holding hands with the man took out her phone from her purse. But then, she put it back. At the same time, my phone announced the call had been rejected. When I got home, 
Eliza's mother Johanna was looking after Amy. Johanna, do you know where Eliza might be right now? Well, she said she had some errands. I don't know. Her tone clearly hit something, shaking with emotion. I didn't want to believe it, but it seemed her mother knew. Eliza had been meeting another man behind my back. Thank you for watching Amy today. But I'm sorry, I have to ask you to leave now. Johanna seemed like she wanted to say something, but sensing my anger, she said goodbye to Amy and left. Amy looked up at me to search my face, but I managed a smile and showed her the cake we'd eat after dinner. Eliza didn't return home until after 10 p.m. You're back late. Had a nice dinner with someone. Mom called me and said you were back. And that you seemed angry. Do you know why I'm angry? You saw that. Yes, I saw it clearly. You with another man. You've been cheating, right? She kept her head down but didn't deny it. How long has it been? Wait, don't tell me, before we were married. Clearly, that man was married. So Eliza had chosen a man who seemed unlikely to complain as a cover. The more I doubted, the more words of torment filled my mind. Then, without answering any of that, she said, Please, let's get a divorce. At those words, I felt despair more than anger. I wished she had denied it. Due to a moment of madness. Because of loneliness. Maybe then I could have forgiven her. Nevertheless, she had cut me off. That's all I could feel. You're leaving me. I'm sorry. It's all my selfishness. She stood up, then staggered and caught herself on the sofa, but I had no will to help her. Eventually, she slowly stood up, grabbed her purse, and left the house. The divorce between Eliza and me was finalized without much ado. I gained custody of Amy. Determined not to wallow in despair, I focused on raising my daughter and went about our daily life with intention. I diligently wrote in the school newsletters and communication books with her teachers, and never missed a school event. I even mastered the art of preparing meals in advance on my days off to avoid relying on ready-made food. Happy birthday, Amy. Dad, thank you. I baked a cake for Amy and gave her the present I had prepared. Wow, thank you. It's so cute. That year's present was a fashionable backpack, perfect for her, who would be a middle schooler the following year. I wonder what mom's present is this year. Wow. Pink gloves and a scarf. I'll use them when it gets colder. After the divorce, I hadn't allowed Eliza to see Amy, but she had sent gifts every year for Amy's birthday. I couldn't bring myself to hide or throw them away, so I gave them to Amy. However, I kept the letters that came with them hidden away in a drawer. This year doesn't include a painting from Mom. It was the first time I realized that, prompted by Amy's comment. Indeed, there had always been a small framed painting each year. Maybe a masterpiece will arrive later. Right. But that painting never arrived. Later, I would find out why there was no painting that year through a phone call from Johanna, Eliza's mother. I'm sorry to call out of the blue. Although I haven't reached out in seven years. No problem. But why call now? The thing is, Eliza passed away last month. She passed away. I could hardly believe it, repeating the words I heard. There was something she made me promise not to tell anyone. Promise? What are you talking about? She had owls. Owls? It's a disease where the muscles waste away and you can't move anymore. Fred, didn't you ever notice before we divorced that Eliza started to fall a lot? Thinking back, I remembered. Eliza often falling while playing chase with Amy in the backyard. Also, when she said she wanted a divorce, she staggered and struggled to stand up. Could it have been? You thought Eliza was cheating, but that wasn't it. The man she was with that day was the hospital director who had bought her painting. It was her childhood dream to dress up like Cinderella and go to a castle. 
After finding out Eliza had owls, the director bought another one of her paintings and donated it to the hotel. He invited her to see her painting displayed under the chandeliers, not in a castle or with a prince on a white horse, but to see her own painting dressed up. Why didn't Eliza say anything about it? She was worried about you and Amy's future. Eliza thought she shouldn't be a burden by staying by your side. I felt dizzy and slumped into a chair. According to Johanna, Eliza's condition was the kind that rapidly worsened. Before she knew it, she couldn't move her arms and legs as she wanted, and swallowing food became difficult. Over the last seven years, she ended up in a wheelchair and relying on a feeding tube for nutrition, and eventually lived connected to a ventilator. There's one last painting she started. Would you like to have it? Yes, I'll come to pick it up. What have I done? I made a decision to divorce in a moment of emotion without a proper conversation. I had never imagined Eliza was facing such a significant decision. Thinking she was enduring all that alone was too much to bear, and I couldn't stop my tears from flowing. I took out the letters I had hidden away in the drawer until then. Just as Johanna said, it must have been hard for her to move her hands. Over time, her handwriting became so distorted it was hard to read. In recent years, the letters were typed, and even those became shorter. Eliza, who can't even write well, sent us small paintings for Amy every year. How did her paint that? I told Amy everything, and we went to Johanna's house the next Sunday. Oh Amy, look, you've grown so much. I was filled with remorse as tearful Johanna greeted us. Grandma, I'm sorry. I don't remember much about you. But you're the one who used to make pancakes, right? Mom said no, but you always added a lot of honey. Well, yes, we did have those times. Johanna hugged Amy, tears mixing with smiles. In the living room, we saw a painting of a woman with angel wings holding a baby and smiling. Could it be, this baby is me? That's right, and the angel is your mother. It represents her determination to always hold and watch over you, even after passing away. So, mom is still holding me now. Amy approached the painting and gently touched its surface. It was still unfinished. Yet, it was filled with overflowing love. How did Eliza manage to paint this? Eliza held the brush in her mouth, using her tongue to move it little by little because she couldn't move her neck. Day by day, she worked on it. With such a method, I was at a loss for words. I want to learn to paint. Is that okay, Dad? Paint? Yeah. I want to finish this painting. Yes. That sounds like something only you can do. I realized I had taken away the time Eliza and Amy could have spent together. If engaging with the painting helped Amy connect with Eliza's feelings, I had no reason to object. Johanna, thank you for being there for Eliza until the end. Of course. I'm her mother. Besides, if it's okay with you, please stay involved with Amy. I can't give Amy the motherly warmth and tenderness she needs. Johanna and Amy looked up at me, surprised. Is that okay with you, Fred? Sure. Amy, you want to see Grandma, right? Of course I do. And I want to know more about Mom and see her paintings. Thus, the bonds of our family being once broken were reconnected through Eliza's painting. I swore to the angel in her painting. I'll make Amy happy. I'll take care of your mother, so don't worry. This time, we'll be a happy family. Keep watching over us.